Good morning and welcome to Lighthouse Christian Fellowship. Lighthouse Christian Fellowship. We're so glad you're here. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and get right into the words. So all the preliminary, we can, we'll do them. They're not preliminaries. They're, they're just, you know, a normal flow. We're, we're going to do something different today. Because um, I got something cooking. How many of y'all ready to eat? Okay. You know, our sign up there says the right way. And during our fast, our 21-day fast, um, the Holy Spirit put his finger on that term in, in uh, Ezra 8.21. And, you know, uh, you know, I preached it. I didn't preach what he gave me because it was after that. And he said, there's a, and, and, you know, there's a scripture that said there's a way that Jesus. seems right. Isn't that something? We can do things for years thinking it's right. And a lot of stuff we pick up in church. Because, you know, we said they were there before me, so they should know. <laughs> we get it from the pulpit. And that's why, you know, we, we, I go through great lengths to get us to get there in the scriptures. Because there are things in there I never say. I mean, not that I'm, but I don't know. But there are things he'll give you. And he, and he tailor makes it to you and your situation. So, so the right way, every time I read the word and think about it, I hear somebody else talk about the word and I think about, okay, that's the way. That's the way. And so I'm going to talk about some things today. And, and everything I look at now is through the lens of, is this the right way? Have I been doing it the right way? Or have I just been doing it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so y'all ready? All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to begin and, Y'all remind me at the end that I'm supposed to receive the offering, okay? And then remind me we're going to have a, 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 a holy moment, you know? And for those of you who are here for the first time, what we call a holy moment is when we have that time to connect with Jesus and help people that don't know him connect with Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I had a... Um, I got a phone call Wednesday morning about five o'clock, and uh, was it one? yeah, I didn't answer it. My phone, my phone was on do not disturb. Actually, it probably was do not disturb most of the time. And that's why, because folks sometimes don't have their time zone uh, down. And it was somebody in Atlanta, a friend of mine. In fact, I, I just talked about it on the. And I, I talked about it. And I talked about it. I said, yeah, he, he called me too much. Y'all remember that? Well, he called me. He said, Ken, I couldn't wait to talk to you. I said, why not? I just, I just got home from the hospital. I've been in the hospital for like five days. And this is what he said. I died Wednesday. I said, you did what? I said, I'm talking to you. No, 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 they brought me back. He said, I, I died Wednesday. And, um, Boy, well, I saw I saw three bright lights. I don't know if it was Jesus, Peter, and Paul. I don't know who it was. <laughs> yeah, he has a lot going on in the body, and and all you know. He, I said, like, "What you doing now, man? I'm just sitting by the window, just enjoying seeing stuff." He said, "When I came out, I'm not preaching yet. I'm just talking." He said, "My blood pressure was through the roof. My glucose was through the roof." Now, before I went in, when I came out, everything was normal. My blood pressure, my glucose, my, my, my oxygen. He said, man, I feel like a new man. I said, well, you definitely didn't go to hell. You definitely didn't go to hell. That must have been heaven where you went. That's a true story. This just happened a couple days ago. He said, yeah. And he said, man, I ain't smoking. <laughs> That's what he told me. He said, man, I'm letting that weed go. I said... I said, it wasn't the weed, man. He said, I know, I know, I know. But because he said, I smoke every day. This is the only way I can get relief. He said, but I think I went over the edge with it. That's why you drinking. Like, I'm just a social drinker. Where's the edge? Anyway, we ain't talking about that right now. But he said, yeah, I'm letting this weed go. I ain't going to talk about nobody. I'm, I'm good. So, so you had a change of heart. Well, yeah. 
said, okay. He said, okay, I got to go. But he said, listen, I told the nurse, I got to call my friend. He's a pastor in the last. I got to call him. She said, okay, I called him. He said, what's his, she said, what's his name? He said, Ken. Well, they called me Kenny back in the day. This is my sixth grade. We went together. I hadn't seen him since sixth grade. Yeah, he, he ran into my brother. He said, yeah, Ken Friendly, he lived in Alaska. She said, yeah, and you know what you can do, right? When you have a phone. So, so she pulled me up. And she, 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 they was listening to me. I don't know which message. I, I said, it wasn't a message what I was talking about you, was it? <laughs> He said, no, I ain't hear none of that. I, ain't hear none of that. <laughs> I, I don't talk about folk and say things to you that I don't say to them. I'm direct, but I'm not rude. But anyway, so, so anyway, she told him, she said, ooh, I like him. She said, she said I'm going to put him on my, on my favorites list. I'm on the list. And there's two sides to that. I was I had a meeting today, but I told about that. But it, it, anyway, so so yeah, my friends, so we back now. I don't know if you if you're watching, receive. Um, all right, I want to I want to talk about some stuff. Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay, let let's pray. I think we already took authority over. I do this every time I come when I come to the building. I take authority over the forces of darkness because people come here with all kind of stuff, and they good people. They're good people. It's just that, you know, we want to help them move on in God. But, Father, we thank you for your anointing that removes and destroys every yoke of bondage, every yoke of confusion, every single one. And, Father, I don't know, there may be people in this room today that they're, they're, they're at the end of their runway and they're about to transition. Some to you, some to the region of the dam and I, I pray that every one of us would be a have a strong conviction of walking with God so I thank you for all that shall be manifest and for all that shall be revealed in Jesus name amen all right I want to talk to you this morning about the climb the climb the climb everybody say the climb yeah see everybody wants to get to the top of the mountain but everyone doesn't want to climb. Okay, you might have been looking down at your Bible. I said, everyone wants to get to the top. Whatever your mountain is, whether it's profession, whether it's job, whether it's health, whether it's, it's, it's your, your thing, the things of God, everybody wants to get to the top. We, we talk about the top. We look at people and follow people that are at the top. But rarely not rarely but a lot of people don't want to make the climb they want to go to the top until they see what the climb is i want to talk to you this morning about about the climb because we we have to climb ladies and gentlemen if everybody if it were easy everybody would do it right and Jesus talked about the climb, but before I get to what Jesus talked about, let me, I got a few more things to say. I said, some want the glory without the climbing story. You know, we want the testimony without the testing story. Oh, she did that? I, I want that. I, I got next. What the heck does that mean? Some of you, some of y'all watching, you said this. I've heard it. I said it. 2024 is my year. And I'm okay with that. But you got to build in the what? The climb. Thank you, kid. The climb. You, you, you can't, you can't, 2024 will be no different if you don't have any plans. 2024 will be no different if there's something you hadn't decided, I need to do this, I need to not do that, I need to do, 2024 will be no different Amen. so we're gonna we're not gonna fool ourselves right right, right? right. yeah so whatever I want to be different that means I'm gonna have to be different that means I'm gonna have to I'll help you with the hard one climb I gotta climb and you don't climb sitting down do you there's some effort in the climb 
So let, let's, let's, let's deal with it. I don't think I'll, I don't know what I'm doing. So anyway, so let me give you some statements about climbing. Don't you ever forget them. If you forget them, go back to YouTube tonight. The climb is about refusing to turn around when you're on the way up. The climb. These are some characteristics of the climb. Because some people start are great starters, but they're not great. No, climbers. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. You're right, finisher. But you can't finish if you don't. There you go, class. Good class. Good class. I, I think we may grade on the curve. Everybody going to pass today. We're going to be like the Anchorage School District. Everybody. I'm so, I've just said that I, I was at a function yesterday. The, a school board member was talking, and he was talking about how they, they instituted some law. Everybody go pass. I found out some stuff. I'm like, oh, my God. Anyway, but that's not the message today. Y'all should have been at the meeting. So everybody go pass. The climb is about refusing to turn around. It's about refusing to let go. The climb is about, in our setting, Christian said, it's about staying in faith even when it looks like it's not working. Stay, the, uh, the climb is about keep, you know, all I can do maybe just put a finger on, but that's a climb. Some days you can, you know, you can climb that thing, up, but sometimes all you can do is point to the top. That's part of the climb. Because you never ever, you're not on always feel like you're at the top of your game. But your mind can say, I'm climbing even though I'm sitting. Physically, you know, physically depleted. You can be physically depleted, but you can still climb in your mind. <sighs> when you doubt yourself, you still what? When you want to quit, you still what? When others think you're being unreasonable, you still what? All right, all right, all right. For Rondi ain't got nothing on us. <laughs> uh, when you look like you're being left behind, what do you do? Climb. Yeah. The climb. Everybody wants to get to the top, but everybody don't want to climb. I'm talking to a bunch of climbers today. We're going to convert some. We're going to energize some. And some, we're just going to push you over the top. But I just need to know if you're going to what? Climb. You're going to be leaving here today talking about climb. Uh, maybe we'll make up a song at the end. Yeah. So when you doubt yourself. See, when you're climbing, sometimes you work in the dark. Nobody see you climbing. You work in silence. Sometimes you don't. I don't. I don't need. Uh, not right now. I don't need. I don't need. I don't need your voice right now because I'm too busy. I don't care if I get the accolades or the applause. I have something I've got to do, and that is to what? Now I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I know I'm talking to you. Pastor, that I don't make it. Don't worry about it. Because we all need to uh, I need to climb. You need to climb. And, and this walk with God is all about climbing because we, those of us who are born again, there's opposing forces against, opposing hostile forces against the kingdom of God. If you love God and you made that public, there's a target on you that's going to require you to do more than you need to do, more than you used to do, more than is, is what people think is required because there's a climb. And that forces the world goes from good to bad. It doesn't go from bad to good. And so if you get in cruise control, and because you, you could have climbed. But if you don't sustain the climb, the world will pull you down. And that's what happens to a lot of people. That's what happened to a lot of people. I was telling the staff the other day, I said one of the things that I've had to come to grips with is, you know, after COVID, you know, for the, for the people that did come back, a lot of people didn't come back. But even for the ones who did, their pace was different. 
Yeah, so the, some, their pace was different. Some of them were indifferent. What I mean by that? Yeah. Well, see, you can climb and you can do it the right way and you can be pressing, but it's, you can have events in your life. You're like, well, you know, indifference sets in and I'm not as committed as I used to be. Yeah. That's not as important as it used to be. Yeah. I was just fine online. Whoa. And it, 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 it will begin to infiltrate aspects of your life and I can think I'm doing it the right way and not be doing it the right way. And so I need to be able to check myself and say, okay, you you become a little indifferent. That time you wouldn't have done that. I mean, we all, raise your hand if, you, if, you, if you're in the building. I didn't say raise your hand if I'm talking to you. I said if you're in the building because everybody, everybody. There's some indifference assessment. It's, it's human nature. And so we have to guard against that. Amen. There's some things we just tolerate. We wouldn't tolerate two years ago. Amen. Amen. Right. That's why we have to do what? Right. So, so many people are asking God to do things for them, but they don't want to do things for him. You know, the thing we had up there for two years, honor God. He said, you honor me, I'll do what? Honor I'll honor you. You're asking me to honor you, but you're not honoring me. See, honoring God is a what? Honor. There you go. Yeah. Peer pressure, culture pressure. Um, um, you know, sometimes we're afraid to, afraid to step out and do things because what if I fail? What if you fail, you what? Fail. You fail. Will it be the first time? Will it be the last time? No. Climb. Right. Yeah. Keep it moving. Yeah. So yeah. I want to appeal again. I'm, I'm appealing to those that you quit climbing. You're kind of like hanging around the ladder. <laughs> you're hanging around other climbers. Do you know you can feel, you can be around people and feel like you're doing it too? <laughs> you can like, oh yeah, that's my buddy. That's why people be dropping names. That's why they drop names, because people admire them for their veracity, uh, for their uh, 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 tenacious uh, aggressiveness and everything. And yeah, that's my, that's my, that's my BFF. <laughs> and what you're saying is, yeah, I'm associating with them, so you can think that about me. But y'all probably don't do that. All right. I want you to go with me, please, to Mark chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I want to go to Mark chapter 10. Let's go to Mark chapter 10. You know, we've been talking about, in this since the new year, we've been talking about humility. You know, we talk about pride. We talk about humility. All of these things are, are um, and we're talking about it, the right way of pride. The, the right way to, with pride is to get rid of it. That's why we talked about humility. Um, but Climbing does something to us. Climbing does something to it. Let me say this. Um, climbing is like sowing seeds of greatness. And Galatians 6 tells us, in Galatians 6 verse 7, whatsoever or whatever a man sows, one translation said, that and that only can he reap. You can't pull out something that, when you didn't make a deposit. You ever go to Global, go, global Credit Union and like, yeah, I'm, I'm here. What's your name? Ken Friendly. Uh, you got some ID? Yeah. 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 Well, okay, that's you. What can we do for you? I need about uh, $30,000. You need what? 30000 Okay. What's your account number? X, Y, Z, two, three, four. I see a name in there, but I don't see anything but zeros. What you mean? Y'all the bank, right? Y'all got, got money back there. You got money in that drawer? Sir, I don't see any deposit. And, well, you can't get anything out 
if you haven't put anything in. Security. <laughs> we got a crazy man in here. Watch this before you laugh so hard. There's people going to the counter of the kingdom of God. Father, in Jesus' name, you know, Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm trying to make a withdrawal. And the angels are like, we ain't even got to check the account. We've been watching, we already know. That's why you've been borrowing from everybody. I'm not talking about money. You're borrowing the anointed. Steve, I need you to pray for me. Pastor, I need you to lay hands on me. I need you to pray for my family. And, and I do. I'm a shepherd. That's what I do. But you know what the strongest prayer is? Come from you. You have no prayer deposit. And so you got you to gotta try to borrow some. I don't know if that's going, is that going over good. Yeah. And so you, you, you need other people. You depend on other people to lift you up spiritually. Because you have nothing on deposit. Climbing makes the process. I said in a minute ago, in the dark time, in the in, in, in the room, I like to I, I like to I like to pray pitch black. Pitch black. I got my, my cave, I got a cave. I got a cave. And it's pitch black. It's in the basement. Can't see nothing. I had my grandbaby down there the other day. Boy, she went to sleep. <laughs> Couldn't get her to go to sleep taking a nap. I took her in there. That girl slept for four hours. I don't know, three, four hours. I had to wake her up. Because that room is full, it's full of the presence of God. And it's dark. And so climbing, see, in the didn't Jesus say what you do in secret? He reward you how? And people wonder, man, how do you how do you do this and how do you do that? And and man, I I, I saw this, I heard this, and then that. see that's all that secret place stuff. But let's call it something else. That's all that depositing. Every time you and, and whatever your flow is, however long you do it, it it's, it that's up to you. But it's, what you gotta know is it's a deposit. And every time you try to draw on this, on, on the on the what praying produced, you try to draw on what praying produced. When you try to draw what prayer produced, you get a withdrawal rejection because you're trying to get something you didn't deposit. Do I need to say that again? And I love you, and and we're gonna keep you know we're gonna keep loving one another. But we need to hear this kind of stuff because there's an indifference in the body of Christ now that wasn't here five six years ago. Amen. And some some of us are trying to live off of what we learned ten years ago, and it's not fresh. Yeah. And so we got to keep. We got to keep. I'm your climbing man. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Never mind. I don't remember. Okay, so so we want to. I can really not. I can't really benefit from something I did not make a deposit in. Okay. So everybody say climbing, climbing. is not, not a feeling. Yeah, it's it's a doing. Now now you can go to Matthew chapter no Mark chapter ten. I'm reading this out of the. Uh, you know what? I don't think I want to do that. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30. Well, not 30, but part of 30. And the uh, message Bible said, Jesus said, Mark my words. No one who sacrifices. Everybody say sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah, he said, sacrifices. That's my operative word here. House, brother, sister, mother, father, children, land, whatever. Everybody say whatever. whatever. Yeah. So Jesus said, whatever you sacrifice because of me and the message. And he said, we'll not lose out. 
And so I wanted to highlight that word sacrifice because the climb includes sacrifice. Right. Amen. That's right. If I want to climb, there's some things I'm going to have to leave behind. Yes, Amen. I didn't know I was a rapper, but I just let out, I just spit something out. <laughs> yeah. You know, Dr. Rick, I, I tell people all the time, there's a lot of things. I'm, I'm pretty smart. I got a lot of, well, I got a lot of knowledge. I read a lot. But there's a lot of things I don't mind being ignorant about when it comes, because my number one thing is to know this book and to know him. And I get to know him by knowing the book. And so, so there's some things I sacrifice so that I can climb. There's some things you sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice in the climb. The climb sets other things. It, it helps you set your priorities. Like, no, no, I got to have this because I know once I get to the mountaintop, it's all over but the shouting. Yeah, right. yeah. And you determine what that mountaintop is. Mm -hmm. But but it's going to require some sacrifice. Yeah, now, we don't like to talk about sacrifice, but it's part of the climb. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, I think I can take you somewhere. Well, okay. Sacrifice is going, okay, let me say it this way. Sacrifice is going to build something in you. Sacrifice is going to prepare you for something. It's going to condition you for something that's ahead. And God is so good and so gracious that there's a lot of things he won't allow to come into our lives because we're not prepared. We see the promise. I like to say it this way, the children of Israel, they, a lot of them saw the grapes, but they couldn't put them in their mouths. And a lot of times we see the promise. I know the Bible says that. I see it right there. How come I'm not experiencing that? Well, it, it takes the climb. Because climb out of what? Climb out of, out of this world's message. Climb out of the, all the stuff. I'm sitting there listening to the world, you know, four or five hours a day, and then I get in the Bible for 10 minutes. That can squeeze out the energy to climb. Y'all going to stay with me for the rest of this? Okay. I, I advise you to. It's good. So, so the sacrifice prepares me and it conditions me for the long haul. I need to climb. I need the energy to climb. It's part of the process. No, it's not part of the process. It's required. In the process, what do you do when things and your best laid plans don't work? What do you do? You already know. Well, you say, "Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm sacrificed. I know. Okay, this didn't work, but I put the work in. I'm conditioned. I already know there's a possibility of it not working, but I put the work in, and so now I'm conditioned that no matter what, God is on my side." God is helping me. Greater is he that sent me. And God has a plan for my life and promises for my life that cannot be annulled. I got a covenant with God. If, if this doesn't work, that's okay. He got a million ways. Maybe I picked the wrong one. Okay, let's go to Mark 5. The climb. You want a good marriage? You're going to have to climb. And it's, it's, it's everybody going to have to climb, not just one person. Amen. Amen. Okay. In your Mark chapter 5? Well, you should be a Matthew. Where you at? I'm looking at the screen, Pastor. That's where I'm at. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me. Are you enjoying this? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you receiving? Yes, sir. Okay because I just need to know what the capacity is. Verse 1, when Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he did what? Climb. What did he do? Climb. What did Jesus do? Climb. Okay, he climbed a hillside. And though, this is so good to me, I had a shouting fit this morning. He said, those who were apprentice, or those who were learning from him, to him, the who? Okay, are y'all reading? Okay, look at the screen or look at your Bible or look at your tablet or look at your phone. 
And when I pause that a word, that's your time to preach. <laughs> We've been doing it for 30 years. Come on. <laughs> okay, I want everybody. <laughs> okay, I want you to look at this because this is going to stay with you all week. This is, this is revelation knowledge. And so, yeah, not now, okay. Sometimes you have to teach people how to come to church, not how to get in the car and come, but how to receive when they get there. This is one of those times, well, every time the word going forth at that time, but um, yeah, so I want you to lock in just for a few more minutes. I'm not, I'll get you out by three, but I just need somebody like, I don't know who that was, but I'm just playing. <laughs> okay, but I want you to lock in now. Tell your neighbor, don't mess with me. T t t tell the folks you texted. Okay, don't text me the rest of the service. I I'm at church. Now, I'm going to read it again, and, and I'm doing it not just to be funny, but for emphasis. Right. So we're going to start with verse 1. In fact, so I know you're reading it, we're going to read it together. Amen. And, and read, the, read, read the version I have up on the screen. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed the hillside. Those who were apprenticed to him and the, to him, okay, stop right there, stop right there, stop right there. It's hard for me to even go past that, reading it together. So those who were apprenticed with him, those who were with him, like we're learning, we're learning how to do this. Apprentice. Okay, no, to him. The committed climbed with him. Stop right there. So you know what that tells me? There were some who were apprenticed with him, and they, they're like, oh, shoot, we got to go up there? Oh, I, I didn't sign up for that. I got my Crocs on. I don't have on my, my Timberlands. I ain't, no, no, I ain't doing all that. It, you know, it, it, we don't need to do all that. I'm here at the base. Whatever, whatever God got for me, he can give it to me right here. I ain't got to climb up there. Let me modernize it. Whatever God has for me, I can get it. I don't need no preacher telling me how to live. I don't, know, I don't need Pastor Finley telling me what the Bible say. I can read for myself. How we doing? We're having a good day, aren't we? Yeah, I don't need, I don't need nobody telling me how to live. The Bible. No. This is 2024, 20, the year for more. <laughs> Which ones climbed with him? The committed climbed. Some people were disqualified because they weren't committed. I know it is. I know it is. The committed climbed with him, arriving at a quiet place. And he sat down. Okay, look at verse 2. And, okay, well, it's, uh, arriving at a quiet place, he sat down and taught his <laughs> See, the folks that weren't really to climb, they didn't get taught. They, they were still eating off last year's manna. I want to know, don't raise your hand, this between you and your heart. Are you still climbing now Amen. like you were climbing in days gone by? Are you, a are you a climbing companion? Amen. Mm. He taught the climbing companions. Okay, let's work with this. See? The committed will climb. I said the committed will climb with God. 
And I'm not trying to show anybody. I'm just trying, this, this is something we need to, we all need to, this, we all need to look. Okay, am I still climbing? Am I still hungry? He said it's the hungry, the thirsty, I'm going to put a word in there, the climbing that gets filled. Because he said they got, they, they got to a quiet place. See, when you're quiet, the Bible says, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me because you're climbing. So, so when you're climbing, you get in a quiet place with all hell going around. Why? What, what, what's the climbing represent? It represents me rising above and getting to a quiet place and sitting down and resting while all hell breaking loose. Boy, well, friendly, you preaching today. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I just, I'm, I just want to know how many climbers I got in the building. I want to know how many climbers I got online today. And so he, 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 they sat down and the climbing can get taught because they know how to quiet their minds. How much time I got? I got, you know, I got to keep this clock from, see, see a lot of time, here's what happened. It's probably not this crowd over here. It's probably, it's, it's probably, no. It's not y'all either. But some people come to church and they, they sit still and, you know, we, we try to keep order in the building, but their minds are all over the place and they can't be taught because it's not, they're not in a quiet place. You can be in a quiet room and not be in a quiet place. God, dog. Boy, man, I wish I had this about 25 years ago. You can be in a quiet room, in a dark room, and your mind be all over the place. So the quiet sat, sat down in a quiet place. Jesus is, Jesus is awesome. He said, okay, first I need to do is get him what? Okay, you get a pass on that one. You, you don't know. He said, first I got to get him to climb. Then I have to get them to the quiet place. Then I can teach them. In other words, if you ain't hungry, I can't. I ain't no sense in me teaching. That's why he said you don't cast pearls before the swine. And it's not that he's calling people pigs. He's just saying it's, it's a waste of time until you can get quiet. See, that's why we sing those songs like that and, and we, we, we decree the name of Jesus. Because, see, that drives out craziness yeah. if you want it to. And then, and then we teach. And so now God can speak to me. Yes, yeah, I hear this. I read that before, Pastor. I never saw all of that. Yeah. And, and so now, now I can be taught. So the climbing gets you to a place of quiet. The climbing gets you to a place where you can receive. All right. Now, you know, I love Jesus. I love his leadership. Style. I need to step up my game with the leadership thing. Because the ones who didn't climb, Jesus didn't say, oh, y'all, come on. It's going to be okay. Come on. It's not that hard. Come on. Peter, go down there and help jo Jawan. Help, help Jawan get up to the first step. He didn't do that. You know what he did? He kept stepping. If they don't want it, the ones that's willing to climb, that's my, that's my crew. Everybody can't go with you. You didn't hear me. I said everybody can't go with you. See, some of y'all got some non-climbers in your life, and you're spending too much energy trying to pull them along. That's not the plan of God for you. You need to, uh, you need to know who you can count on and who you have to how now? They're not bad people. They're not bad people, but they just can't climb right now. Boy, I think I'm going to bless myself today. I'm bless myself with a, with a, 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 a woo-hoo cup of ice cream because this is good stuff. You ever had some woo-hoo? Yes. Okay, my woo-hoo people. Yeah, yeah, my woo-hoo people. Boy, they got some, okay, I ain't supposed to be advertising online. But, uh, yeah, so you need to know, okay, they can't climb with me. They can't climb with me. And that's why, you know, this is, this is my, I've, I've been with this woman for 40, 45 years, 45, I don't know, 40-something. 
And the reason we talk so much, and we have hard conversations, me and, just me and I, we don't know what's in the house. And we have hard conversations because I need to make sure I'm climbing with her, or she needs to make sure, excuse me, I'm climbing with her. I need to make sure she climbing with me. Amen. I need to make sure she didn't she didn't get off and catch a limb and like you gone, boy. <laughs> no, okay, I didn't mean that for effect, but you need to determine. You need to do a personal audit yeah. of my life. A personal audit. Can they climb with me? Are they climbing with me? Am I using so much energy trying to get them in place? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> now, you know, we talk about this all the time. Man. At this age, I ain't got time for that. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love people and everything, but I, I, I just turn quick. If you don't want it, I love you. Amen. But I'm not going to spend time trying to get you, right. trying to get you to want it. That comes from within. No. Climb. So the committed will climb with you. The committed will go the extra mile with you. Yeah. Jesus didn't take everybody. You know, Paul, we, we, I think last, the end of last year, we talked about Paul, how Paul, he, he focused on, I'm finishing, I'm going to finish my course. Y'all remember that? And then he started telling us about people that deserted him. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I'm going to see if I can say this. I have some law enforcement in here. So just in case, you know, they come up here and grab me, you know why. <laughs> Never mind. You don't even know what I'm saying. You don't even know what I'm saying. You don't know this because I just this, this is new. This is new. Well, it's not new. I'm just trying to frame it. I've been called a lot of things over the years, and one of the things they 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 I've been framed as a cult, a cult leader. And so, because I say, I say things, I just, you know, you say things, and I don't care what you say, you're going to be, Jesus was framed one. They say he lost his mind. Here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I lost my reputation a long time ago. No, there are people that you poured into you give giving your best to and those very people will leave you for dead they don't care they will leave you for dead i know that's that's kind of hard i know but it's the truth you got to know who's climbing with you and who's not climbing with you you got to know who's there for the fish and the loaves That's what happened to the prodigal. They drained him dry, and he was out there trying to eat with the pigs. There's people in your life right now, they're there for the fish and the loaves. What does that mean? Only for what they can get. Some of them are relatives. And you feel an obligation to help them. I get that. But someone will leave you for dead. Then they'll fight over. Let me get back to my message. Y'all see why Paul there? Because that's some strong stuff. But it's what? I don't know if you ever had your heart ripped out. And, and let me borrow them stilettos, uh, Hazel. And they went and got them stilettos in your heart. 
Oh, they went down Mount Doom, you know, them big old holes off from the, from the, from the, from the snow. <laughs> and they get the construction. Let me borrow that jackhammer. I don't know. Is that what they call them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's your heart. I know you don't hear a lot of this at church like this, but it's, it's, it fits. And that's why you read it sometimes. Just read sometimes. Read close how Jesus, I think I told you a couple of weeks ago, one of the things, last Wednesday, one of the things you have to learn in order to keep your peace is human nature. Right. you got to understand human nature. Right. If you don't understand human nature, you'll be all over the place emotionally. People, you got to understand, good people can go rogue on you. Anyway, okay. So y'all just listen so good. Y'all pull me all off. I'm going to get y'all by three, though. Yeah. So, climbing. Climbing campaigns don't ask you silly questions. Like, why are we doing that? Is all this necessary? Why do I have to get up at 6 a.m.? Climate companions don't ask you that kind of stuff. <laughs> the committed will climb. Why is the climb important? The climb is what separates you from the pack. Yeah. The climb will keep you pushing through when the whispers of self doubt, you fool. Those whispers of, what were you thinking anyway? Yeah. The, the climb will keep the whispers at bay, yeah. and you keep climbing until you don't hear them anymore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Climb, I'm climbing. Well, you're a single mom. You got three kids. Don't nobody want you? No, those, well, those, are, those are voices. Those are whispers. Nobody wants you. But that's not true. I know, I know, we got four not true. I know it's not true. We have been married six times. Well, seven may be the one. Yeah. You got, it depends on how you look at it. Maybe you were wrong six times. Climbing, all I'm trying to say is, ladies and gentlemen, I could have sh shut this down about an hour, not an hour ago, 40 minutes ago, I could just say, hey, everybody, just keep climbing. Amen. But I, so I to take the long route. <laughs> Keep climbing. I was, I was um, you know, you start, start thinking about your mortality, you know, be 68 in a couple months, but you start thinking, I went over to Psalm 92, where it says, if you stay planted in the house of God, in the kingdom of God, you will produce, even in your, all of old folks I know this scripture, <laughs> in your old age. So here's how I framed it. If I keep climbing, I'll keep thriving. Yeah. All right, climbing. So climbing overrules the, the whispers. Climbing overrules the voices of the porch people. Porch. The porch people. Or the grandstand people. I never forget. I was a, uh, yeah. I was at Bartlett. There was a tra the track track meet, and uh, it's amazing. Folks in the stands can be brutal. Yeah. And then I've been some of y'all kids' game, and I heard some of y'all too. So, anyway, <laughs> you know, the folks in the stands can be brutal. Why that coach? That coach must have BBs for brain. You see the boy Candy? He don't even know which goal is he is. I don't know why is he out there. You know, or or the baby. So so so. So there's people in the grandstands of your life commenting, watching, and commenting. Yeah. There are porch people talking about all the neighbors. Oh. Well, back in back in the day, we just sit on the porch. Yeah. We, don't, we don't even have porches now. I don't know. I don't have. A, well, I got a deck. It's a deck. We call them decks now. <laughs> and, and you you sit on the deck, and you're like, uh, oh, there they go. <laughs> You know, and you know, and you're like, don't look over there, don't look, don't look. There they go. 
Now, what, what, they, had, what, they, need, what they need a truck like that for? <laughs> you know how y'all do. Yeah, those are the porch people. Those are the porch people. You have the grandstand people. Let me ask you something. I thought about this. I thought, you know, they run the 440, 400 meters. And I was like, wow. They, they, they're coming in. I don't know. They look like they got a kick, though. They, might, they may bring it in. What if the person out there running, and then you're in the grandstand, you, you're in the grandstand, like, you, why, why are you running like that? Your form is all jacked up. What if the, what if the person that's running, like, what, what you say? <laughs> what if the person gets off the track to address what the person in the grandstand is saying? Why do you care? Why do you care? You're running the race of your life. Why do you care about what people think about you? That's a drop the mic moment right there. Why do you care? You're running. You're on the track. They look like they're about 19 months pregnant. They, they can barely walk up the stands, and they're trying to tell you how to run. Tell them. I said, tell them. Tell them what? Well, I don't talk like that, but y'all tell them. Y'all know what y'all... No, I just play. But no, you, you got to make up your mind and be a comedian one. I don't care what you think of me. I, I say this all the time. She's the only person that can hurt me. Because I weigh, her words are so weighty on me. They're weighty. I don't care. You, you learn that as you go on. You know, you run a few races, and you know, you heard the porch people, you heard the grandstand people, and you kept on running, and you won anyway. Right. Yeah. Man, this is good. All right. I think I have. Okay, I'm not going to give him this right here. I'm not going to give him that one. I'm going to give you, can I give you one more? Yeah. Of, of course I can. Can I keep you till three? Yeah. Ah, Father. Then you can use this in whatever arena of life you have to keep climbing. If you're young, if you're, stu you're a student, you keep climbing. If you're adolescent, you keep climbing. If you're, if you're you know, uh, middle age, uh, whatever that is now, but in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you, you keep climbing. Whether you retire, you keep climbing. We never stop. Okay. Um, hold on. Um, no, let's go to First Timothy chapter 4. I may have to part to this message. All right. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15, out of the NLT, he says, give your complete attention to these matters. Paul was talking to Timothy, and y'all know Timothy had issues being the pastor of a large church. But he said, throw yourself into your task. So that everyone will see your progress. Wow. Throw yourself into it. Now, see, it's amazing how sometimes we we like, well, you know, I, you know, I don't want to, when God starts manifesting in you and through you, a lot of times people, well, I don't want people to think, I don't want people to think, you know, this or that and that. First of all, first of all, newsflash, first of all. They don't care what you think they're going to think. They're going to think what they want to think, whether you say anything or not. They're going to think what they want to think, whether they understand or not. Porch people, grandstand people make up stuff. <laughs> but here's the other side of that. God wants to manifest in your life so much that they say, whoa. I know he said he, 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 he reads the Bible every day, he prays. Whoa. Paul said, 
throw yourself into it. Now let, let, let Papa talk to you for a minute. <laughs> See, some of you have never thrown yourself into something. You just played with it. Amen. See, climbers throw themselves into yes. it. You get mad? Yeah, man. Okay, you know you're going to have to leave all the mother honeys alone, right? <laughs> well, you know, man, it's a new day. Fool, it ain't no new day. You throw yourself into your yes. relationship. You throw yourself into raising your children. Yeah. You throw yourself into walking with God. Yeah. I got any throw or selfers in here today? Yeah. See, see, the could be you is waiting on you to throw yourself into it. The, sh the should be you is waiting on you to climb and to throw yourself into it. Whew. If Paul said, throw yourself into it, and your progress will appear to all. Wouldn't it be tragic if I'm still preaching the same way now than, you know, like when I started 20 years ago? I come up here, you know, I pull out a sermon, you know, about, uh, about two hours before I get here. I said, let me go. Okay, let me update those, those jokes right there. And uh, let me, uh, and then get up here. I tell you what, you could tell. You could tell. You could tell old boy threw himself into this mess, can't you? I, I mean, I don't, I don't. But that's what Paul was saying. Throw yourself into it. Others will see it, they'll feel it, and you cannot be ignored. The climbers and the thrower. One more scripture, please, and then we're out. I wonder how many people I'm talking to today that know they need to climb and throw themselves into it. Your 24 will be awesome if you can throw yourself into it. All right. Here's the last, and this is the same, same point I'm making. This is in Acts chapter 4. The preachers, the apostles were on a... They were on trial for preaching and demonstrating Jesus. They were on trial for just being Christians. And a few verses earlier, this, they were at the gate called the Beautiful Gate. And they, Peter and John, said, such as I have, give out thee. And they prayed for God. They didn't pray. They just yanked him up and said, in Jesus' name, walk. And so now these religious folks got upset with them. And so now they're on trial. So verse 13. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage. Bold. Bold. Everybody say bold. bold. I see uh, Brother Bill back there, they had the bold man conference yesterday. It was so good. Bold. I want one of them t-shirts, too. <laughs> I ain't giving me no t-shirt. I want one of them t-shirts. are cold bloody. <laughs> anyway. Okay, everybody look, Bill, Bill, wave at me so folks know what I'm talking to. Okay, that's Bill all over there. Main event, food, uh, he's the owner. Great place to eat. Yeah. Great place to eat. I just advertised again, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what was that? Verse 13. The council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who had never had any religious training. But then they began to understand. They began to understand. They began to understand. They began to what? Understand. I got anybody here today that wants to understand something? Yeah. Oh, this is so good, God. Thank you. I love you so much for this. They began to understand the effect Jesus had on them by simply Doing what? When, and that's my prayer, is that we understand. I'm not losing anything by spending time with him. Bold courage manifests. Signs and wonders manifest. Courage manifests. When you spend time with him. See, here's the thing. We can't, we're so consumed sometimes. We're thinking, I got to do this. I got to be better. I got to be stronger. I got to be. Well, you do, but what you got to do is spend time with him to get the courage, the power, the anointing, 
the, it, yeah. Whatever struggle you have, time with him yes. will produce a courage and a strength and a power. Uh, they took notice that something supernatural will own these boys. Look, they can't have talk. They splitting verbs and everything. But I tell you what, <laughs> something's on them that cannot be denied. And and oh boy, the boy that they healed, that got healed, he's standing back. He was with, he he followed them to church. He followed them everywhere. They're like, hey, maybe they can't talk articulate articulating that and all of that. But I tell you what. They know how to get a crippled man well. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Wow. So look at verse 14. Uh, well, no, I don't, I don't. Yeah, verse 14. Standing there with them was the healed man, and there was nothing further. They could say, at some point, there ought to be some stuff happening in our lives. They may not like you. They may not applaud you. They may think something's wrong with you. They may not... They don't like your color. They don't like your accent. They don't, but there comes a point where there's nothing they can say. Amen. Sometimes our present, the only explanation our presence has been with Jesus. Been with Jesus. Wow. 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 I want you to stand with me, please. I want us to pray. Now let's believe God. And we're gonna let's bind the seed of this word to our hearts right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Father. I want you to just begin to thank God for, for for what you are what's happening inside of you right now. If something's happening, if nothing's happening, don't worry about it. But for those of you that's like you got stirred this morning. You were stirred this morning. I just open up your mouth, open up your mouth some kind of way, and just, just Lord, thank you. A new day is dawning. Yes, my 24 is going to be different. I'm going to climb. Yeah, I'm going to climb. I'm going to put the work in. I'm, yes, I am making a commitment to do that. I'm climbing to do that. Where I'm at now is not where I'll be nine months from now, ten months from now. In the name of Jesus, you're my help. You're my strength. You're my hope, Lord. Thank you. Angels are camped around and about me. And yeah, some tough decisions I had to make, they're not going to be that tough anymore. People, I'm going to have to let go, and, and there are people going to let me go too. But I'll understand. I'm not ready for their companionship just yet. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I want you to repeat this after me. In the name of Jesus, name of Jesus I, will I will not be denied. Not be denied. I, will I will receive everything, everything. I, see I see that's available for me, available for me. In, the of God. in the kingdom of God. I will climb. I will, climb. I will commit. I will, I will stay the course. I will, the course. I, will I will walk out everything. The Holy, Spirit the Holy Spirit helps me with. Helps me with. Father, Father, thank you. Thank you. People, are going to see People are going to see a new me. A new me. My, presence My presence will demand, will demand an, explanation an explanation beyond, beyond my, natural my natural training. The power of God, power of God is, on me, is on me, is in me. And new thing. Are beginning to happen. It begins today. In Jesus name. Now with your free anointed self. Go ahead and give him. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. I'm climbing. I will not be denied. I'm not going to turn back. The voices of doubt are gone. Done. I'm climbing. I'm climbing. I'm climbing. I am climbing. Yeah, I'm climbing. I don't care what people think. I'm climbing. I'm not going to let their opinions become my reality. I'm climbing. 
Yeah, I know I stunk it up. I know I messed it up. But now I'm coming up because I'm climbing. Yeah, it's not God's not done with me. I'm not done with me. I'm climbing. I am not a quitter. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving in. I'm a climber. I'm a climber. And Father, I want you, I plan on attracting climbing associates. All the people that's no good for my life. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, help me separate. Now here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing. When you start climbing without compromise, you don't have to say anything. Y'all ever seen the space shuttle? Well, some people think we went to space, some people don't. But whatever that shuttle was, the, the, the rocket, you know, you, you know how certain things start separating as it, as it, they don't want to keep going up? That's you. That's you. Everything that falls off, those are non-climbers. Those don't hang around us. But it's a new day. I'm so grateful. Every head bowed, every eye closed while you're standing. If you're here this morning.